My name is Ramsey Clark. I'm 41. I just turned 41 today, so today's my birthday. I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, but I'm currently a resident of East Moline, Illinois. I've been living here for quite some time, so I'm quite sitting in that. Well, it's a funny story how I, what brought me to Safer Foundation. Um, a friend of mine used to work for the Safer Foundation, so I actually seen him when I was at my brother's house. He was having a get together as he does in the summertime. He has a pool and all this other stuff, so we have to get together. And buddy asked me what I was doing, so I told him that I was working at PPG, which is kind of like, you know, a dead-end job, but I was using it as a stepping stone for something else. So he asked me, he says, you ever thought about getting your CDL? I said, yeah, I, I have, but I don't have any way to pay for it. Once again, I'm making like $11.70 an hour or something like this. I don't have any way to pay for it. He says, oh, well, the Saver Foundation will pay for you to get your CDL if you want to do it. I said, yeah, I want to do it. So I think this was a Saturday or a Sunday, he was like, well, I'll get up with the people and then they'll give you a call. And he did all the footwork, I didn't do any of it. Safer Foundation called me, I wanna say Monday or Tuesday. And then we did the consultation over the phone, we set up an interview and I went there. This was during COVID, so I had to wait a little while. I went there and I think I had to wait a couple more weeks to enroll in the CDL program. So then I enrolled in the CDL program. They paid for it, they even gave me money for gas and things like this. So I was doing that and then I, um, you know, obviously used I used their program to get my CDL and then I used my CDL to get me a job driving because I always knew that I'm looking for ways to better myself, you know, so I knew that me getting my CDL was going to increase my higher ability. So I did that and then I moved on to the next one. I got out of the halfway house on May 5th, 2020. I started working at PPG or the Crown Group in East Moline May 11th, 2020. Um, I was working there. Uh, see what they call it, being a materials handler. I, I worked night shift from 11 to 8.30. And then I got a different position at PPG where I was working in shipping and receiving. So I went to the daytime shift. And then I got my CDL through the Safer Foundation. So I was working at PPG from six to three. And then I would go right around the corner and work at Standard Forwarding from, I used to work from six to 2.30. Then I would go to Standard Forwarding and work from three to seven every night. So I did that from January to June. And then June, I stopped working at PPG because I passed all my driving tests and got my hazmat certification and everything that I needed to work at Standard. So I was working for Standard driving for them. And I did that for maybe like 30 days. And then I ended up, uh, I had applied for a position at Iconic. Then I ended up getting the interview and I got offered a position at Iconic, which was in July of 2021. So then I've been working at Arconic since then. I'm in a, I work in plate mill, so I do a bed saw operator and then I do crane repair. I'm not crane repair, but cranes. So basically what we do there is, uh, I like to say we cut rectangles into smaller rectangles and sometimes squares. So we do a lot of stuff for Boeing, SpaceX, Ford, um, Nissan, Airbus. Pretty much anyone that buys aluminum, you know, we. The grind is tough. It's not, it's, it's, nothing's easy, but I used to hear guys coming back and saying, oh man, it's so hard out there, this and that. It's only hard because you make it hard. You know, like I haven't had a hard time. The hardest time I have every day is waking up, going to work. The hardest time I've had every day was when I was working, going to school to get my CDL. That's the hardest time I've had. Other than that, it's just, it's just, it's a, you know, it's a routine. So I put myself in a routine every day. So I just get up and do the same thing. And it's really not hard. It's not as hard as waking up every day in those same four walls surrounded by that fence, seeing the same people every day that don't care about you. This is way easier than that. So, you know, I talk to people from prison all the time and I tell them it's not hard. It's easy out here, really. If you want it to be easy, it's easy. All you gotta do is have a goal and be willing to work towards it every day. It's not hard. It's only hard for people that, that want things given to them. You gotta work for it. And not saying that I got everywhere that I am. I'm nowhere, but not saying I got everything by myself. Not people have helped me, but nothing was given to me. You know, they put me in a position where I had to work for something, where I had to grind for something to get it, and I did. I got in a really lucky situation. I understand everyone doesn't have a strong support system as I do. So, you know, like there was no pressure on me to come home and do anything right away. Only thing my parents and my brothers and my sisters wanted for me was to not go back to prison. So I was able to take my time and just kind of like figure out a path for me because 
I wasn't paying bills. I didn't have to worry about buying a car. I didn't have to worry about like buying clothes or getting a, a phone or anything that, I don't have kids either, so I didn't have to worry about anything that a lot of other people coming home have to worry about. So my support system is phenomenal. And I wish that everyone coming home could have that, but I know they don't. And that's just the thing that, for me, like, that's the thing that put me over the top is my, my family, my support system. If you're coming home and you can, get in the, you can get in a program that can teach you how to weld, or you can get in a program that can teach you how to do HVAC or carpentry or something like this, and if it's maybe not free or if it's a, at a reduced price, because let's face it, a lot of guys are coming home that don't really have the resources to pay $3,000 to get a CDL. So they can enroll in programs where whatever is subsidized that they're getting paid, that, that someone's paying for it to happen. I think a lot of guys would make a choice to do something different with their lives and, and do what's right versus going back to the you know, same old thing. If I knew the things then that I know now, it's like, it takes a lot of the, a lot of the same tools you have to have to be successful at anything in life. Or like, I'm not saying I'm successful, but I'm saying to, to, to persevere and to do anything in life. A lot of the same tools, a lot of the same drive that you need for that is the same drive you need to pursue a, an illegal career. If I started when I was younger, like being focused on like trying to make a decent living, trying to be just a regular person, you know, like a regular successful person like my parents are like, I would have been, you know, a, like a lot better off now. But I guess it doesn't really matter like when you get there, I guess it just matters that, that you get there eventually, you know, and I think that's why, like I'm proud of myself, but I see a lot of people around me that are like proud of me, like the things that I'm doing because like, I haven't figured everything out, but I'm figuring stuff out every day and I'm kind of like living a better life. So I kind of like try to like be better today than I was yesterday, you know.